Hello guys, this is Quad, and first of all I want to wish you all a Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. And of course let me flex my skills. Feliz Navidad, Bon Natale, Je Noël, Frohe Weihnachten, S Novem Godem i Rождеством. Alright, with this out of the way I wanted to present you something special today. Since I have Enigma I decided to make something stupid but also fun. This is being the full clearing the game on players 3. So basically I ran every location starting from Act 1 and finishing with Ubers. Yes, I will do Ubers as well, but please not on players 3. They are too tough for my summon necro. And yeah, there are a couple of reasons to doing this. So first of all, I actually want to make it as kind of an ode to Enigma. Enigma being such a great item in the original game that allows you to do so many things that I wanted to somehow commemorate making it and this was literally the last thing I did in the game. Then second I wanted to check what can I actually find full clearing the game and here that's why I put players 3 to kind of reduce a no drop chance and maybe have a little possibility for a rune. And of course in the end I will present you all the statistics about sets and uniques found and the highest rune I found. And then lastly, and I think we often forget about this in the real lives and in the game, is actually just to have fun, to do something different in the game from being super efficient and farming for runes and uniques. And I have to say I really liked it, that was really interesting and fun and wasn't boring at all, I did it in barely two free sittings and spent around 11 and a half hours on the entire content here. Without any further introductions you have already seen some cool drops and rolling 35 FCR spirit that was definitely scripted for the streamer lag so yeah here also a really nice orb with two sorg skills 10 FCR 2 to blizzards it's not godly but also something that can carry you along through the hell difficulty for sure. Then I also found some useful charms like this 6 to life and 14 all res. Also in the jail we got the small charm that was pretty useful to me, that's a 19 to life one. The catacombs were pretty easy with teleport as you don't need to run around things and we found here also 3 to max damage and 19 attack rating small charm. Some random Arak dropped me the bramble meats. These are laying of hands. And of course Andario with her trademark drops that are basically nothing. Act 2 was pretty fun as well and rather easy except the two locations and in the meantime I found these nice boots with very faster run walk, dual resistances and a lot of extra gold. There was this really funny place I discovered, the void behind the wall. And yes, as I said, I really cleared the maggot layer, that was a joy for a summoner. Took me I think like 15 minutes or maybe more. In the ancient tunnels, being area level 85, you can actually find cool stuff, so... And I think I did find a rare item here. This is Frostwind. And yes, of course, Arcane Sanctuary. I also full cleared it with the Salmon Necro. Here is a Duriel. Let's see the drops from this beauty. You son of a maggot! What the heck is this drop, seriously? I found a second pair of Bramble Meats, and also in the Flare dungeon it was pretty dangerous with all Vestigian dolls and so on. I actually did not reroll the location, so if there was bad spawn of dolls or souls or gloms or whatsoever, I just continued playing, it didn't really matter. 
In the temples I found really nice circlet, again 2 paladin skills and 20 all res, nothing extremely crazy but again will make you through the game for sure. In Endurance of Hate I found the Ogre Maul, that is IK Stone Crusher. And another really good example of boss drops in Diablo 2, Mephisto, complete garbage. And by the way I had around 260 MF on this character. Here is another useful small charm, 11 cold res. And the usual pop, if you didn't know, when he dies, everything dies around about two screens. This is also a cool technique to find runes sometimes. Diablo was an exception to the garbage boss drops, because he dropped me the troll nest, it's a pretty rare item. Headhunter's glory with only two sockets though. And here we start Act 5. I actually haven't beaten the game if you didn't notice, because I wanted to keep the Ancients quest reward, but then decided to forget about it and just make some cool content later on. We found here a long battle bow. That's a pretty decent weapon for the budget ice bow zone. Bits and draw with minus 28 to cold res. And the Thresh Sockets didn't have a chance against our army. IK Boots from a random monster. And I think in the Drifton Cavern I also found the Trunks Belt, also a pretty nice item. Here, look at this, I have never seen those before. The fire salamanders, they actually throw the fire spears, that's rad, I haven't seen it anywhere in the game. I don't know if you did, but for me it's probably the first time I see them. Here is another decent small charms, 7mf. And actually first time killing ancients, so I completed the quest line even here. They were surprisingly easy, even on player 3, but I guess yeah, because my mercenary deals 10,000 damage already. So one of them was already dead, the second one was following shortly, and Madav didn't have a chance after all. Boom, really nice chunk of XP over there. With Nihil Attack I actually had to really do like in a cardboard animation, start spamming Corpse Explosion as soon as the first monster dropped, and later on when I farmed him he actually dropped me Horizon's Tornado. Bale and Waves also had no chances at all, the waves were pretty easy, I even uh, farmed them a little bit later to level up to level 93. Wave number 4 dropped dead, and then wave number 5 as well. Lister and his gang did not survive. Bale had exactly the same fate as all the other bosses and basically slowed down until he couldn't do almost anything, and the entire army was on him. He dropped me the cleaver though. That's kind of a nice budget weapon for a melee character, the Butcher's Pupil. And here we are, we became the Patriarch Cinder. But of course we had one thing to do, it was a cow level. And we got a lucky spawn right on top of a cow king, so he was basically the first cow that we slaughtered. He dropped a lot of stamina potions. And just to showcase you that Necro is OP on a cow level, here is one example. Basically everything dies super easy, and this is again on players 3, so it's not that they are super squishy. As I said, I quickly leveled to level 93, so before going to Ubers, without possibility to lose any X. And I did my rookie mistake. As in the first time I ran Ubers with Summon Necro, I forgot about Source of the Open Wounds on my mercenary, so the fights with mini Ubers were really terrible. 
although the durial was kind of okay. The location was also not too difficult. Ijo was the easiest of all of them. He probably doesn't have that high health regeneration or something, but he was really easy to kill. But Lilith, on this last millimeter of health, I spent almost entire game of revives trying all the possibilities to overcome this health regeneration. I was so ready to rage quit, seriously. But eventually, she was defeated. And the same thing happened with Bale, even with a source of open wounds, he still did not want to die, so I think having the Beast Rune Ward really simplifies it a lot, and I really will not continue without the Beast Rune Ward. Alright guys, so after all I found actually 71 set and unique item in about 11 and a half hours of basically full clearing the game on players 3, I had around 260 MF on this Necro, and yeah, it was pretty fun, the highest rune was Ko. I hope for maybe some better rune, but it just highlights that you actually need to farm specifically and more efficiently to find those. Let's see the torch. And it's a paladin, with 15 to all attributes and 19 to all resistances. Pretty nice one. Alright guys, hope you're having great holidays and enjoying your time. Thank you for watching and see you next time. Bye.